Good morning everyone, Charger Trolley here with the episode 5 recap of Alone. And first I, I was having trouble deciding on the title of this one. Bears, Bees, and, and bye bye Or there must be some misunderstanding. So before we get into the the body of the of the rant we we didn't see anything of Rose, Coulter or Teresa nothing of the Sandcastle maiden of the other five that we that we saw Matt uh, you know I said at the very beginning that Matt wasn't going to stand a chance Matt didn't stand a chance Teresa, in my humble opinion, I'm sorry, not Teresa, uh, Michelle. In my humble opinion, Michelle was the most ill-equipped participant of a loan to date. She had absolutely zero skill set and did not belong out there. Uh, Biko, yeah, he's just Biko. I, I'm i sure he'll, he's uh, acquired a lot of new uh, Facebook friends and uh, maybe even a couple of new sponsors, especially a, a knife sponsor or something like that. Um, Jordan Jordan's a Michigan guy, so I got to pull a little bit for him. But, but him and Clay seem to be. I mean, Clay uh, more than anyone just doesn't have a complaint. I, him and Jordan are just in a different, different class of people. They just sort of see problems or see things that they need to do and they just do them. Um, didn't see the canoe this episode. I can't remember who who made it. Was it? Uh, I think I don't know if it was Jordan that made it. But uh, there was Nate as well. But anyways, a pretty uneventful show with the exception of the large amount of time spent on the, the tap outs. Which sort of brings us to the, the main issue that I'm having. I just, there's something different about this season of Alone. And I don't really know what it is right now. Um, I just, I cannot put my finger on it, but there also seems to be a bit of a disconnect between, uh, producers and fans and participants of the show. Um, I don't know what the, I don't know what the producers are expecting, I'm not sure exactly what it is they're looking to get out of this. You have the fans, you have two, two in a, to me, two uh, sets of fans. One is the, the people that watch it for the survival aspect and to watch people that are supposedly experts in this field expertise us. And then you have the fans of the show that I don't know, watch it for the bears. Watch it so, you know, more or less for entertainment. And whatever reason they have for tapping out is just fine. It's just you nothing to be feel sorry about. Um and then you have the participants which to me is almost beginning to sound like the real competition is getting on the show. 
it's like if you get on the show it's almost like congratulations you've uh, you've won the chance to have an awesome experience and then when you get tired of the experience just say so and we'll take you out uh, there doesn't seem to be a real sense of um, of this being a competition it's just more about the experience um, and that to me is one of the problems I I'll never understand tapping out because you're homesick I would think that being homesick would probably be a major topic of discussion around the house would be a major topic of discussion with some of the participants or all the participants before they go on the show um, they probably go through some sort of psychological testing I know they do on Survivor uh, being homesick would, would be brought up and it's not like they're taking you away from your family. Um, I, I'll just never understand. I'm homesick. I want to leave. Uh, like I said, the spouse should say, if you tap out because you're, you get homesick, I'm filing for divorce. I said, I, I think the best, the best alone show after this should be the... Uh, the season of orphans, where you you were orf, you're you're orphaned, you have no relatives, no family to speak of. There's no reason to tap out because you're homesick. That would be maybe the best show. Um, I don't know if it's the weather that's different in this one than it's been in previous years. You know they there no one's setting any snares I just think it's a waste of time to stand out there and cast one hook out into the water I don't know why they don't set up one of those uh, I don't know trout lines or fish lines they know there are some probably like for whatever reason you can't you know, squirrels are endangered on this island, and maybe you're only allowed a couple of hooks in the water at the time. But still, you're not casting it out much farther than what you could be setting a line out in the water. A lot of them, you know, you in other seasons they they drove like uh, sticks down in and, and made their lines that way. And strung the line up across a couple of sticks. Um, like I said, there's no snare. They've been out there 20 days. 21 days about was the tap out. But you could take the first day, scout the area, set up your temporary shelter. And even if you set two snares a day, you'd have 40 snares set up by the 20th day. And you could put a trout line in let's say you're only allowed three hooks you'd have 43 potential uh, traps or uh, food sources and then you can get to being busy with your shelter and stuff I just I don't think there's there's much of a a push for getting stuff done before the weather gets bad it's almost like they're waiting for the weather to get bad in hopes that the food sources get better. But they're, they're no trap line, no snares. Um, you know, cast a line out into the water and hope you get a fish. I don't know. There's just something very odd about this season. And I know it's, uh, one gentleman in, in the comments is who talked a little bit about the social media presence and stuff. 
I don't know. It's, there's just something very off about this season. It's almost like the contestants really are, um, have they reached a real lull in, in experts in this field? Is that the problem? Are they really only going for, if you're too good at survival, you know, maybe maybe the rolling factor went into effect. They, they don't want any more of these hardcore hardcore guys anymore. And the, the year before where the guy spent uh, time living with some of those uh, villages in, I think it was the Soviet, somewhere in the, somewhere in Russia. Um, maybe they're trying to get away from them. I mean, if, if experience doesn't really matter, why don't they just put anybody out there? Anybody with a good story, you know, some jabroni from uh, Midtown Manhattan who's never spent the, the night in the tent or in the woods, he might as well go. If if it's really for just the entertainment and the experience, just put anybody out there. I mean, uh, that 600-pound uh, life, they could just take a few of those people out there and put them on the alone diet. I don't know. There's just something weird about this season. Uh, maybe it gets better now with... Uh, uh, what is it going to be? Down to seven contestants now? No, six. So maybe it gets a little bit better with uh, the remaining six. Um, I'm still interested to see Teresa. I, I kind of thought with her skill set she might... She might be there at the end. Uh, Jordan, you know, I got a root for the Michigan guy. He's looking a little weak, but uh, what's his name? Clay. That dude, uh, Clay might be the one this year. After two weeks, or after three weeks, he's not complaining about being hungry or anything. So. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully, uh, the show does get better. But I almost think that somewhere along the line, this show has jumped the shark tank. And they need to get back to the uh, survivor and the competition, the survival and the competition aspect of this show rather than how uh, it plays in social media. So with that, it's Treasure Troller saying aloha and good day.